And this is a lesson for 15-2. What we're doing today is something called a step function. It's called a step function because obviously it looks like stairs going up, all right? When you take a look at this step function, notice a couple of different things. Notice that as we go from the left to the right, notice that it looks like you're going up the stairs. They're not always going to go up, all right? Sometimes they will go up. Sometimes it will look like stairs going down. Notice how we have an open dot and a closed dot on each one. Most of the time, it will be an open dot and a closed dot, um, but it doesn't matter um, which one is which. Sometimes it's the closed dot on the left, like these are, and the open dot on the right. Sometimes it's reversed. We'll do some today that are opposite of that, all right? But this is a type of piecewise function. The steps are disjointed. Disjointed means that they don't connect, all right? And they are all flat lines, all right? When we go to graph things today, and there are a couple of people on yesterday's homework, when we have like an equation that's like f of x equals, I'll use one, all right? When it doesn't have an x, remember that's a straight horizontal line that goes straight across. That's the type of things that you're going to be having here. You won't have equations today that have an x after them. It'll just be uh, like the f of x equals a number. All right, so that's going to cause all of these to be straight lines going across, which is going to cause these to be what they call step functions because they look like stairs. So all of these are word problems today. The first one says, in 2006, the rate for a taxi ride in Macon, Georgia, was $1.20 for the first mile or part of a mile and $1.20 for each additional mile or part of a mile. So over to the right hand side here, they're giving you the breakdown for a five mile trip. All right. If you go anywhere from zero miles up into including one mile. So if you go a half a mile, how much are you going to pay? You're going to pay $1.20. If you go 0.75 miles, you're still going to pay $1.20. If you only go 0.1 miles, you're still going to pay $1.20 because as soon as you step in the vehicle and move one inch, you're paying $1.20 all the way up to like one full mile, 1.0 miles. Then when we get past that one mile, notice that it doesn't include one here, but it would be like 1.01 miles all the way up to and including two miles. So you might go a mile and a half, a mile and a quarter, a mile and three quarters, 1.9 miles, anywhere in between that one and up to and including two miles exactly, you're paying $2.40. And then so on and so forth. You are thinking back to yesterday's lesson. Right here, these are going to be your open dots because they don't have the or equal to. These are going to be your closed dots because they have the or equal to. The closed dots and the or equal to includes those numbers, the one, two, three, four, and five. The open dot here does not include those numbers, but it would be numbers that are just after it. So it doesn't include zero, but it includes 0 0.01. It doesn't include one, but it includes 1.01. It doesn't include two, but it includes 2.01 and so on and so forth. So how the heck do we graph these? Well, this is your Y equals, all right? That's your Y equals. And the numbers that you're graphing are these. These are sort of your amounts. So anywhere that we travel from zero to up to including one is going to be $1.20. So we're gonna put an open dot at zero at $1.20. Now you have to sort of estimate where $1.20 is. $1.20 is approximately right there. You sort of got to line up the center of your circle. All right. So $1.20, and that goes all the way to one mile, and that's going to get a closed dot. So anywhere in between zero miles and one mile, up to and including one mile, you're going to pay $1.20. In between one and two, you're going to pay 240. 
So 240 would be approximately right here. You're gonna put an open dot right there and draw it over to two. And that at two, that's going to be a closed dot. For two to three miles, it's 360. 360 would be approximately right here. And that goes in between two and three, not including two, but including three. So anywhere from 2.01 all the way up to three. Then we have um, three to four. Three to four is 480. And four to five is six. And that is our step function. These are actually sort of easy to go to graph, right? It's just sort of figuring out the open and closed dots and things like that. Take a look at the next one. In the next one, now this one is a step function that goes down, right? To, to encourage quality and minimize defects, a manufacturer pays his employees a bonus based on the value of the defective merchandise produced. The fewer the defective merchandise produced, the greater the employee's bonus. The bonuses are calculated as follows. So $50 for more than zero, up to and including $100 of defective merchandise. So an employee is going to get $50 if he produces only from zero through um, $100 worth of defective merchandise. He's going to get a $30 bonus from $100 up to and including $200 of defective merchandise. He's going to get $10 if it's uh, $200 to $300. And then over $300, he's going to get nothing. So, what the heck is this step function going to look like? Remember, your less than symbols, that is going to be an open dot. Your or equal to's are going to be your closed dots. Does it always go open and then close? No, the next example that we do is not going to be like that. So at 50, at 50, we're going in between zero and 100. An open dot at zero and a closed dot at 100. So it's going to be like that. At 30, we're in between 100 and 200. At 30, we're in between 100 and 200, a closed dot at 200. At $10, we're in between 200 and 300. So an open dot here, a closed dot here. And then above 300, right? Above 300, we're at zero. So zero is all the way down at the bottom. This is gonna be an open dot here. And because it keeps on going, we're just gonna put a little arrow on the right hand side of that because it keeps on going. It says anything above $300. So notice how this step function goes down. Sometimes they'll go down, most of the time they go up, but this one happens to go down. Take a look at the next one. A jewelry store offers reward coupons to cut to its customers. A $2 reward is awarded for each $20 spent. So for every $20, you get $2. Um, what, write a function that represents the value of the reward coupons awarded up to $100 spent. So if we spend $0, we're gonna get nothing, all right? All the way up to, all right, all the way up to less than $20. So if we spend from $0, through 1999, how much are we going to get? We're going to get zero because for every $20 that you spend, you get two. For every $20 that you spend, you get two. So if you spent $15, are you gonna get a bonus? No. If you spend $7.50, are you gonna get a bonus? No. If you spend $19.99, are you gonna get a bonus? No, because it's for every $20 spent. So now $20, if we spend $20 exactly, will we get a bonus? Yes. How much will we get? We'll get $2. You'll always get $2 up until you get to 40. 
So if you spend anywhere from $20 to thirty nine ninety nine, you're going to get a $2 bonus. Anywhere in between there, you will just get a $2 bonus because you only get increased by $2 for every $20 that you spend. The next one would be $40. If you spend exactly $40, you're going to get a $4 bonus. And that 40 includes anything up to $59.99. So this would be a 60, less than 60 here. If you spend exactly 60, if we spend exactly 60, you're going to get $6 bonus. And that's anywhere in between 60 and 80. So up to $79.99, you're going to get $6. If you spend 80 exactly, you're gonna get an $8 bonus all the way up to, but not including 100. How much do they get at exactly 100? Well, at exactly 100, they would get a $10 bonus. We don't have to go any higher than that because it says for awarded up to $100 spent. So we're gonna do a step function for this now. It, at zero, we are in between zero and 20. Open dot, open dot. So at zero, anywhere spent in between here and here, you're getting zero dollars. As soon as you hit $20, you're getting $2. So it includes that two, it includes that 20 all the way up to 40, but not including 40. So it goes all the way up to 39.99. You're gonna get $4 as soon as you hit 40. All the way up to 60, so really up to like 59.99. So it doesn't include the 60. You're gonna get $6 in between at exactly 60 and all the way up to $79.99, so less than 80. You're gonna get $8 when you spend 80, all the way up to 100. As soon as you spend exactly 100, you will get $10. Well, what the heck do we do here? All we're gonna do is put a closed dot. We're not gonna draw anything else because it only said to go up to $100 spent. So sometimes you will end up with step functions that just have a one random dot. It all depends on how the word problem is. Take a look at this one. This one is a very, very typical Regents exam question. Right? Very, very typical Regents exam question. A kid's bounce house charges $8 for the first hour and $2 for each additional hour. Write a function that represents for up to five hours of playtime. So for, for zero hours up to one hour, anywhere in between. So from one minute that you're renting the bounce house, all the way up to exactly one hour, how much are you going to pay? You're gonna pay $8, because you're paying $8 for that first hour, no matter whether you rent it for 30 minutes or two minutes or 59 minutes, or exactly one hour, you're gonna pay $8. You're gonna pay $2 for each additional minute, or each additional hour, rather. So. $2 more, and that's in between one hour, as soon as it goes over one hour, so one hour and one second, all the way up to and including exactly two hours. If you rent it for exactly two hours, you're going to pay $8 for the first hour and another $2 for that second hour, so $10 total. For as soon as it gets past two hours, all the way up to and including exactly three hours. So it might be two and a half, might be two and three quarters hours, all the way up to and including three hours, you're going to pay $12. 
for hour three through hour four, you're going to pay another two dollars. So you're paying fourteen dollars. And then from hour four to hour five, including hour five, it is sixteen dollars. So again, notice that you have your open dots here and you have your closed dots here. So on our step function, it's going to be open, closed, open, closed. So at eight from zero to one, at eight from zero to one. So it's going to look like that. At 10 from one to two. At 12 from 2 to 3. At 14 from 3 to 4. And at 16 from 4 to 5. We stop right there because they only wanted you to do the up to five hours exactly. Questions so far? Take a look at the next one. Try this next one on your own, please. See if you can do it. Try this next one on your own. See what you think it would look like. So let's see if you're on the right track here. You're gonna get $100 for sales between zero up to and including 250. So from zero to 250, exactly, you're going to get $100. From more than 250, more than 250, up to an including 500, including means the or equal to, you're going to get $225. You're going to get 350 for anything more than 500, up to an including $750. You're going to get $475 for anything that is more than 750, up to an including thousand dollars. So those are the things that we're graphing here. So at a hundred, it's in between zero and 250. Now you sort of have to estimate this would be 300 right here. So you have to sort of estimate where 250 would be. So you're going to put a solid dot right there, close dot right there. It would look like a graph. In between 250 and 500, it's 225. Again, this would be 250 right here. So 225 is right about here in between uh, 250 and 500. 500 would be exactly right here. Um, on the next one, 500 to 750, we're at 350. So we're going to put an open dot right there at 500. 
and then all the way to 750. 750 is right about here. And then 750 to 1,000, it is 475. So your step function should have looked like this. Questions on this one? I want you to try one more. This is the most common type of question on the region's exam for this topic. An ice rink charges hockey teams for ice time to practice. The ice rink charges $10 for the first hour and $12 for each additional hour. Write a function that represents that for up to five hours. Go ahead and see if you can do this one. This is the most common type of question that there is. If you're having a hard time getting started, let me start this first one for you, all right? In between zero all the way up to one hour. So if you're renting it for zero, you're not gonna pay anything because you're not renting. That's why we don't have the or equal to with the zero, all right? But anywhere up to one hour. So if you rented it for a half an hour, three quarters of an hour, so 45 minutes, all the way up to 59 minutes, 59 seconds, including one hour, and right? it includes one hour. So your first hour, you're paying $10. From the time that it goes to one hour and one second, you automatically get billed for that full next hour, no matter whether you use it from one hour all the way up to and including a full two hours. So a minute, so an hour and 59 seconds, um, or an hour 59 minutes, an hour and a half, an hour and 10 minutes, you're getting charged an additional $12. So this would be 22. From hour two through hour three, all the way up to three hours, add another 12 onto it. So this is 34. From hour three through hour four, Add another 12 onto that. So that would be 46. And then from hour four through and including hour five, all right, this would be uh, 58. So that's what we're graphing. $10 in between hour zero and hour one. $22. So again, you have to make a little estimate. All right, it's going to be like that. And that is between hour one and hour two. And then 34. And then we have 46. And then in between hour four and five, it's 58. So again, most of the time with these step functions, they do go up. It's just sort of how the word problems are set up. Sometimes you will have your open dot to the left, sometimes to the right. It all depends on how the individual question is written. 